Hello there. I'm going to be doing a really quick video today covering some low stakes poker. Um, I'm sitting here at a three handed, uh, four handed table. We just had Mary join us. Um, Jail and Tiberius have been playing together heads up for a while. I just sat at the table with 80 chips, and Mary just sat with 40. So we are going to look at kind of how these players play and what we can do to exploit them and win their chips. And because this is a low stakes table, we're going to be focusing mostly on playing good hands ourselves and not getting too crazy with the hands we play and the styles we play. Because generally at low stakes, you should uh, just play ABC poker. It should be very uh, straightforward poker. Don't need a lot of bluffs. Don't need a lot of big reads. You just wait for other players to make mistakes. So here we see Tiberius raising and Mary re-raising, and Tiberius just calls. Those were two small raises and re-raises, so the pot's pretty small yet. And Mary leads out on an ace-five deuce, and Tiberius uh, folds. So it's, uh, it's hard to say anything about that hand. We're not sure what either player had, so we can't say um, either one of them played it poorly. We're going to look to see some showdowns from these players and get some reads on them. Here Mary limped her button. Um, it's generally a bad idea to limp your button. So that could indicate a weak hand, or it could indicate a bad player. I think it certainly indicates a bad player, because good players always raise their button. And here on a six queen king, it was raised and re-raised, and then men re-raised back. So we look for Jill to have a very strong hand here. Um, if he did have the king, the queen scares him a little bit, but he doesn't want to go all in. And they do both have the king. Jail did have king six for two pairs, so that makes sense with the re-raise. Mary is playing top pair with a very weak kicker, much too aggressively. So that is something we're going to be able to exploit. Um, that means we're going to be trying to play a large uh, pot poker against Mary when we have top pair good kicker. So we do have jack ten suited. That's a great hand. It forms great top card, uh, top pair hands, straights, and flushes. So we are going to look to put in a raise here and isolate Mary and play a heads up pot. And she does call. And we do flop the straight draw, but there is a big flush draw out. So we know from previous experience that she overplays top pair. Uh, I'm going to go in and assume she's going to play middle pair. Um, and this is a hand that hits lots of hands, so I'm not going to bet here just because there are so many spades. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait and see if the spade comes out on the turn. And if she checks again, I will bet the turn. So right now I put us on... Oh, she is betting to us. That uh, indicates that she has a hand. And she did make a bet last time, or actually a raise when she had top pair, so I'm going to allow her to have top pair here, which means I have 8 outs for the straight, unless she's got a spade, in which case I've got 6 outs. And with 6 outs, I'm not getting the equity I need to call. I have about 12% to win the hand. And she was giving me 7 to 10. Okay, so I do pick up 2 queens. I'm going to make a raise. And I'm confident these players are... are going to call five, so I'm going to raise as much as they will call. I probably could have raised a little bit more. So I do get a heads up with Jill. We are going to lead out on any flop. This is a great flop for us, because if he's got a jack, he's going to go all the way with us. So we're going to lead out two-thirds of the pot and see what he does. If he calls, we're going to bet the turn. If he raises, depending on the amount that he raises, we may go all in here or we may wait till the uh, turn. Most likely, we're going to go all in. Because we want to shut the hand down. If he's got a jack, he's going to call our all-in bet. And if he's got something like ace-5 for um, an ace-high draw, then we don't want to give him a chance to catch that ace on us. So here we've got two threes against Mary. She only has 51 chips, which doesn't give us equity to raise here and hope to flop a set. We are going to have to just play this as a small pair. If we were 200 big blinds deep, we would raise there and hope to flop a set and get a very big pot going. So Mary has checked the flop to us, and we check behind because we, we've only got third pair. Um, and now we've got 
uh, basically the worst pair because any two now has trips. And she does bet, but it's only a dollar, so we are getting odds to call that. And the six comes, that creates lots of straights that were drawn to straights, it creates lots of pairs that were drawn to straights, and it also makes the flush card come, so we are not confident with our hand here. Um, but we did have the best hand, that's why we called the turn, because there was no indication that she had anything of value. So the question there on the river that a lot of players have is, should I value bet? And a value bet is a bet when you have a hand, and you think the opponent will call with a worse hand. So if we put our opponent on something like ace-king, and we thought maybe we could get a call out of her with just an ace-high, um, we would bet there. In that case, we didn't value bet because we didn't put our opponent on a very good hand, so we knew that any hand that we beat would fold instead of call, and any hand that beat us would call instead of fold. So value betting is just a waste of money because she's only going to call when she's ahead. Um, so if there were hands that we beat um, that she might call with, we the more hands in that group, the more likely we are to value bet. Um, in that case, there were absolutely none. And your value bet should be sized appropriate to the size of the pot and to the opponent you're playing, as well as to the strength of your hand. And even the strength of their hand in most cases. Um, but generally your value bets are going to be sized somewhere between a half and two-thirds the pot, sometimes full pot, but much more rarely you'd bet full pot on the river if you thought they had a very good hand, but you had an even better hand. So there Mary played very passively with two eights, so I'm happy to confirm that she is a bad player. I'm um, a very passive player at that. So we've got four five. Um, we do have some big stacks here, so we are going to go in and raise this. We hope that some of these players will, will call us and will flop a strong hand. Now 4-5 is a relatively weak hand until the flop, but there are many flops which it likes. This is not one of them. But with two players in the pot, we can see bet this. Generally, you want to see bet when there are one or two other players in the pot. That gives you the most equity to fold out all other players. And Mary does call, and the turn does come in ace. So the question is, what did she call with on the turn? And it could have been a 6 or it could have been a 9, which she have called with a draw. It's uncertain, but she could have. And she's given me 20 to 1 um, to catch my 4 or 5 or to just see what she does. So there were no flush draws. Um, and she is a very passive player and she is leading out. So generally when a player plays contrary to what you expect them to play, like a passive player betting, that generally signifies a strong hand. So we had an option there to raise as a bluff, but you don't want to bluff passive players because they are more likely to call you. And the fact that she was betting very, very small, to me that says she's got a six more often than not because she's playing her hand out of character. So here we have ace five. Uh, ace five here is a raisable hand, um, especially with Mary in this pot. So we are going to go in and raise it. This is going to make it a very hard hand to play against Jill but we're going to hope to flop the ace, and uh, I, I don't expect him to have one. So we're just going to see how it plays out. Jill does call. And so we only have one other player in the pot. We are going to make a value bet. This is a relatively bad board to value bet. It is very dry. Um, so if there were two players in the hand, we generally would value bet there, but with just one we can. So the way it works is three players don't value bet, uh, don't, don't see bet, unless you're value betting. Um, two players, you can see bet as a bluff. Sometimes you should generally value bet when you have a hand or when you have something like ace high. Um, that is, uh, I consider that a value bet because most of the time you are dealing with no pair hands. Um, if you had something like 2-3, that would be a straight see bet bluff. And you would only want to see bet bluff on very disconnected boards with two players or slightly disconnected boards with one player. In fact, with uh, with one player, I'm generally always going to see bet whether it's a bluff or a value bet. So we've got two tenths, a very strong hand, and we're going to go in and make a raise. And we hope to get a couple of callers in here because that'll make uh, us a lot of money if we do catch a great hand on the flop. And it looks like it is going to get called. 
Okay, great. And we do flop the over pair on a very dry board. This is great for us because it means there are a lot of players out there with pairs and draws. Mm -hmm. And against those pairs and draws, we are ahead. So this could be a time. We'll see. There's 36 in the pot. We only could call at least 40. Mm -hmm. So I want to go to 56. And if somebody does go all in, obviously we are going to call. We're pot committed at this point. And here we have no option but just to get all in. And we are ahead and we do take down the pot. So that pot was a little bit larger than we like to play with pocket tens there, um, just because the board is so dry, and we do have two other players in the pot, so somebody could have two pair or a made draw, but we didn't really get to dictate the size of that pot. After Jail let out on the flop and it was called, um, it would be a big mistake to simply call there, so we do have to raise, and we didn't have a big enough stack so that we could raise uh, smaller and wait for the turn. We didn't have a short enough stack that we could just go all in, or, though technically since we were pot committing ourselves, we could have just gone all in. So here it is re-raised by Mary, who is a passive player, but a re-raise is so small. Um, I'm just going to go on a call here. And we are getting trapped here, but I don't think this is going to continue for very long. And we are pot committed at this point to calling one and two chip raises. So it does get jammed all in. Mary most likely will call, and we are going to fold. That was a really poorly played hand on both uh, both players. And maybe we'll get to see what kind of hands they're making this play with. No. Generally bad play. It's okay though, we like bad play. Bad play means that if some, if at some point we've got a great hand, players are going to play badly at us and we're going to make a lot of money, just like we did with Pocket Tens a second ago. So we've got 6-5, it is heads up. We're going to check, it's not a really strong hand, so we don't want to raise. We're going to let the flop come out see where we stand. And we do not like this hand, so we are going to fold. And 3-5 on the button, we are going to fold. 